Uh, do you want to approve the minutes from last meeting? Yeah, somebody else can do that because I want to. Make a motion to approve the minutes. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, wait. I can't vote. <gasps> Yeah, I'm just so used to doing this. <laughs> Gary just seconded. Oh, good. I mean, I, I honestly, I didn't do that. It's a habit after. Yeah, it is. Years, just, right? Let's just keep no it moving, you know, a second. All right. I'm sorry. You're referring from talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Okay, director's report. Uh, so right at the top there, the reason I'm not in a full uniform is because they're all getting patches sewn on. So this is um, our department patch, our brand new ones. And I got patches for Can everybody. Oh yeah. oh yeah! Well you're part oh, of the department, yeah. aren't you? Yeah! Um, nice! So this design, uh, as I said in the director's report, when we, when we first came together, I, I mean we're talking a few years ago now, we asked all the existing EMTs um, and members of the department to like as a quasi patch design contest to submit their ideas, either in writing or in a design or something like that. Um, and it wasn't, it was a patch design contest as in we wanted to honor what everybody wanted. Um, yeah. So overwhelmingly the, the notion was we need to have the blue bridge in there. Um, because metaphor, right? I mean, yeah, not only is it a common recognized landmark in the area, but it literally bridges all of our communities together. Yep. And also by incorporating the image of the Blue Bridge, all three towns are in that image. So you've got the banks of Waitley and Deerfield yep. and Sunderland all encompassed in that image. So even, so without listing the towns or trying to figure out what order or anything mm -hmm. like that, that you know, this is our heritage there and, and obviously the Mount Sugarloaf observation deck kind of yep. looking over all of it. Um, and the shape of the patch too, one of the one of the things about this design um, was we wanted it to be unique because we're a very unique department. We're not a fire department, we're not a police department, we're a standalone um, EMS agency, the first regional one in, in Massachusetts. Um, so we wanted it to be unique, but we also wanted it to look classic. So it, yeah. it didn't look like we were created yesterday, that if you saw that patch on a wall, you know, it looks like yeah. we've always been there because we have in, in one form or another, all the members. So. So this is what um, came out of it, and uh, we're really, we're really I stoked. Love it. Yeah, I love it. Did you see these? I have one problem. I have, I have one big problem with this, you know. <laughs> you're, you're, out out order, so no. you're out of order. <laughs> you're out of order. You sure? You sure? Huh? What could you possibly have a problem with? It's cute. It's not the center of Deerfield. Poor <laughs> 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 man. Even though I can't vote. <laughs> Sack. That's very yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, and it's I a one job. Well, to the credit of all the members on the department, and a little help from a graphic designer who could kind of have an eye for spacing yeah. and things like that. So, um, those are shed going up the river. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other nice thing, uh, we actually. I I felt great. Um, these were. Uh, ordered through, uh, there's a fellow paramedic, I actually went to school with him, um, who's a representative for a small mom and pop patch company. So they were ordered through that company and there are other options for challenge coins and other embroidery and, and we own the rights to the embroidery pattern. So um, it's, it's ours to um, put on shirts and put on trucks and put on patches and all that stuff. So great. Very much. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not in a uniform today because they're all getting patches on. That's great. So. Okay, very, very, very exciting. Very exciting. Um, let's see. Moving on. So, uh, you know, with the idea of this outreach, this patch, this uh, public face, just like last month, this month continues to be heavy in outreach, just because of the time of year. So, just in the past few weeks, uh, we've done um, ambulance standbys for the Pound the Asphalt event in Sunderland, the 5K, 10K foot road race. And I guess uh, we got a follow-up email thanking everybody who participated. They were planning on 
like 400 or 500, they got 600 something people. Wow, and so right. next year they think it's gonna be an even larger success. So That's good. Um, it was great that we could be a part of that. Uh, we were also hired by Deerfield Academy for their commencement. They hired a paramedic level ambulance to do that and also for their Deerfield Academy reunion weekend. Um, so all the recent graduates come back and they're hosted for a couple nights. And right. so we deployed our local EMTs with their security department um, and we're able to respond with first aid gear and radios and stuff like that. So um, um, that was great. Uh, and uh, the Pound the Asphalt event, as well as these other outreaches, we all did because we had the third ambulance available. So we kept two ambulances in service for emergencies. We took the third ambulance up for that. Um, I also went to the Yankee Candle Company to meet with their Code 1 team. So their Code 1 team is their first aid team. And they're all in-house, they're employees who work there who volunteer to be on this team and they get trained in first aid and CPR. And whenever they have an incident in one of their facilities, that team responds immediately. And their nurse who's in charge of all of that, she invited us to come do a, a, a show and tell about our equipment, but really it was an opportunity for us just to liaison with them, meet them face to face in a non-emergency setting. Right. And I told them that th they're invaluable. When we measure success, in EMS, it's like, it's usually by time. They call 911 and how many minutes does it take for us to get to the patient side? Well, even if it takes us five minutes to respond to the manufacturing plant weekly, it's another five minutes for us to navigate through the building and just get to the patient. Um, whereas because their code one team exists, they're at that patient side within a minute and they're able to start that treatment immediately. And then when we get there, you know, they can relay information and they're really that like almost family member. They can tell us things that we wouldn't be able to know otherwise. Like, oh, I see that person in the hall all the time. They're no, normally really jovial. Yeah. You know, right now they're definitely different and stuff like that. So the so, team actually consists of people in the different facilities? Yes, so because that, all the different facilities, all the different shifts, um, I went over there and met with them on seven different dates and times. Wow. Um, and 5 a.m. shift was the midnight coming off. I did two of those. I came in at 2 p.m., did two shifts coming on. Um, and we did the retail store, the distribution center in, uh, center, uh, excuse me, in Deerfield, and the manufacturing plant in Waitley. So um, got to see all of them, show them our equipment, answer questions. Um, and a few of them, I extended the opportunity if they were interested in, in EMS and volunteering or just a career in that to come see us. We have an open door and whether they, are, you know, they want some guidance how to become an EMT or interested in doing a ride along or see how those things go that, that were a resource right. for them as well. So. Yeah. Um, that was really great. All made possible because of that third ambulance. I could bring it over there and show the equipment. Um, and actually, that image in the director's report of me speaking with, that's the retail store, that was taken by their um, public relations person. So, Yankee Candle shared it on their Facebook page and social media, and South County EMS in like um, shared that back and forth. So, we got some, some cross promotion uh, cool. with that. And the Conway 250th celebration, 250 years, right? Yeah. Yeah, take that, Oregon, right? <laughs> um, uh, that's coming up this weekend, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, South County EMS will be up there and provide EMS coverage, um, not just for the event itself, but also uh, for the town of Conway so their members can participate in the festivities. Because all of their EMTs are also associated with the fire department. So they can participate in either the activities or just the celebration, and it frees them up. So South County, uh, we've got an ambulance. I'll be up there Saturday night. Um, we have other crews Friday and Sunday. So nice. that'll, that'll be really great. We'll be, we'll be enjoying the celebration with them. Zach, you forgot to mention that you were at the o opioid mm -hmm. test. Oh, yes. And you had volunteered to be on that. Committee, yes. which I think was very wonderful. We, um, we had the Opioid Task Force meeting in Deerfield last week, which actually um, made us change the, day, the place and time of our boom meeting so we could all participate in that. And yeah, I, uh, it was, it's a great resource for the, for the county and for the region, and I noticed that, at least from what I could see, they could probably um, use some more EMS representation. So I reached out to them to see if I can get on those boards and give up. Give that insight right. as well. So I, I appreciate you participating. Yeah, yeah, happy to. Uh, new ambulance has been delivered. It is in service, and it's great. It's absolutely great. Um, 
I don't know what to say on that. Everybody loves it. Uh, we've got the auto load system, which will be going in the other ambulances, but it's a godsend. I'm not having to lift patients anymore. Uh, the ambulance is nice and quiet. The ride is great. It's definitely, you know, it's so much safer for the patients and the staff. It's, it's really incredible what, um, I mean, our, our other, the international is the next most recent <coughs> ambulance that was 2010. So it's amazing how far we've come in six, seven years even just as far as safety goes. I love the um, you spending time with me and doing those videos and yes. posting those and um, just incredible just to hear how, how it's all put together and your knowledge of it and how it's how you, you know, care for our residents and the safety features. It's just really awesome. Yeah. awesome I, think, I, think it's, I think in the long run having our EMTs being able to be strapped in Yes. Well, prevent huge. some kind of, you know, I mean, who knows, but it would potentially have a huge impact on us in the long run as far as no injuries. Mm -hmm. And um, again, your workers' compensation is very high for EMS, and the reason why is because there's always back injuries, mm -hmm. and having those, spending the money for those um, <coughs> cots in the long run will keep our um, EMS costs down and we are going to apply for some kind of credit towards having that because the, like I said the EMS rates are high just based on you know having to lift patients and usually having back injuries so hopefully we will see some payback on that mm -hmm. um, down the road too and if not a lower rate at least no, no injury. injuries yeah That's right, a huge, huge, no, right. Huge, again a huge <coughs> work safety investment I think yeah yeah, well, I, we're we're very proud of that. that but those cots are so impressive. They oh, okay. they lift up and they hung on it like a monkey. It just yeah. doesn't even yeah. yeah. no. Yeah. yeah, wheels are made to go over rough terrain. Yeah, and and they're rated for heavy people. And yeah, it's incredible. You know, it is. It's, it's really, really an incredible system. And and I mean, we wouldn't have had an injury, you know, as a public information. So at that truck stop, that person would would not have injured our you know, uh, uh, paramedic if. We had, had that system already purchased, so um, that was a really, yeah. I think that was a good investment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our annual inspection by the Office of Emergency Medical Services, so every year the state inspects ambulances, every ambulance service, and that's not just the equipment that we have and making sure that it's all in date and a good sound working order, but also that our training is up to speed and that we're running everything in house and we're abiding by, you know, DEA medication requirements and all that stuff. So that started, it's typically a one day affair. It started last Friday um, and just because of scheduling conflicts, um, we split it up into two days. So uh, we were going to do the second half tomorrow. It's actually been rescheduled to Monday. No, nothing is is worrisome. No, we're not anticipating any any problems or anything like that. So, um, it's it's nice to work someplace where, <laughs> you know, don't have to worry about the state inspector coming around. It's just here's what we're doing. It's like okay, looks great. You know that type of thing. So, um, that's going on. And then um, just the last thing kind of segues into I guess the next order on the uh, agenda, which was brought up at the last meeting, just the idea of the IMA um, and its language um, and two concerns that were raised um, both relate to the language in the IMA. One is Sunderland and Waitley and Deerfield all contributed physical assets, ambulances and equipment to South County EMS. Um, and over the years, just like the Waitley truck has Former Rayleigh truck is no longer with us, and we got the new truck. Um, as this equipment turns over, what happens in the future um, if a town were to decide to leave the regional service? What happens with the assets or compensation? Um, not that's not described in the IMA, so there was that question. Um, and then also with the Board of Oversight, what authority and purview does the Board of Oversight have in relation to the fiscal agent, in this case, Deerfield, um, and what's their responsibility in relationship to one another to follow the, the wills or the decisions of the other party. Um, not exactly ironed out in the IMA, so. Um, that concludes my director's report and segues into the next um, agenda point. Thank you. Okay, let's discuss those two topics of the IMA and 
SS. The assets, I think, would be kind of easy at this point. We're into the third, fourth, and five years down the road. I mean, pretty much, I would think, the individual towns by this time, just for the length of time, would dissolve their assets by now. It would be South Counties. I was, was think there, I'd be looking for an ambulance back. Was right. there ever, um, I guess, a list, a master list of what each community contributed? Yes. yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, a lot of it was disposable stuff. I mean, the other was stuff was stuff that was physical to the ambulance. Um, right. You know, can't run the ambulance without a stretcher and sure. yeah. monitors and stuff like that. Yeah. And most of that's been used up and kind of recycled and bought new under South County. And so I don't know if we really need language at this point in time. I, I don't really feel it's necessary um, just because it's a, you know it's time spent on something that is backward looking versus right. forward looking. So I mean, if somebody was trying to exit like first or second year, then I guess right. you know that yeah. would be reasonable that they might want their ambulance back. But uh, you know, if we if ever anything happened then we would have to discuss it. But to spend time now just doesn't, I would rather have us spend time on how we are gonna manage moving forward. Um, one of the issues um, we had talked about, uh, the last meeting we just touched on a little bit um, relating to Zach's, um, you know, pay uh, is, is, you know, the good faith, I guess is the best way to discuss it, you know, to be discussed. This, this Board of Oversight, I mean, Right now, the Board of Selectmen is on here, so it complicates things. But um, Deerfield is a fiscal agent, so in good faith, Deerfield should go use the recommendation of the oversight and it should go forward. Where we're having some issues is, you know, it, it doesn't quite, the recommendations don't quite meld with the policies in Deerfield. And so, um, based on good faith, kind of, I don't know, attitude, you know, the Board of Selectmen, I just don't want it to seem like we're rubber stamping it because we're not. We're, we're, we're participating and, um, but in reality, the fiscal agent is more limited than they would normally have oversight on. Like regular your, own, uh, dear yeah. own department. Yeah, this is, and this so is it, it ca time. it's caused a lot of friction within the town of Deerfield, but you know, that's not South County's problem. That's exactly. that's our problem. And so we're trying to iron that out. And I, I think as we have more fiscal, um, I mean, if we get on top of things and we have more history and we have, you know, Zach gets more experience with budgeting and, you know, there's more oversight. I mean, the meetings are televised, so it's not like there's, mm -hmm. I mean, there's transparency. So yeah. hopefully people, and we get a building, um, then I think people will feel more comfortable and it won't be such an issue because we'll, we'll have ironed out a lot of these things. But, you know, we just need to keep working together and hopefully people will have patience and understand that we're trying to do the best we can. Like, poor Zach has to wait till the end of the month to get his final thing, but, you know, the Board of Selectmen on our, will be on our agenda on June 28th. And I honestly, I, I can just, uh, I want to apologize because I really thought we had mumbled through it because we went to the personnel committee, we only approved part of it, and I really swear that we mumbled through it at, at, the, at one of our Slevin's meetings, but I guess we didn't because Trevor went through the minutes and tried to find it, and there was nothing, but, you know, it was time, meeting time, I don't know, but there, that discrepancy between what the personnel, the, the old, because we have a new compensation schedule that was approved at town meeting. So Zach's old recommendation at the old rates will go through at what the oversight had approved. And it will be done before July 1st. It will be done under July, uh, June 28th meeting. But I will be going to the personnel committee on Monday to explain to them again why 
we need to, to do this. And, and again, I can only explain it as good faith because that's basically what we need to do is we need to work together and mesh this out. But I, I think as do time Do we need to on, put some of that language into our IMA? Yeah, I, that I don't know Over the summer yeah. so the three towns can yeah. see it and vote on it. And, <clears throat> Then it'll be I'm not really sure how to explain it, but, mm -hmm. that's, but you know what I'm saying, right? It's this, it's the good faith of trying to work together, and then. Well, I, I I believe every town still should have the opportunity to have to 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 discuss at their town, and again, people don't realize that um, when when we have when we have a union contract that's negotiated, well, you have the right the town each town with Frontier has a right Union 38 as well. That first year of the contract, you have the right to discuss that contract, and if you agree as a town or an organization that you agree with what was negotiated. Has that ever been challenged? No, but but the, <laughs> I just was wondering. No, no, no. but but the, and, but actually, that's a good question. But there there is you you do have now. But if you go to that first and and you have to do it at that first town meeting when that thing's been appropriated. You have the you have the authority. You have the responsibility to review the contract and to say if you agree or not to that. So I still agree that every town has to have. You you can't take that. You can't take it away. Um, and we shouldn't be afraid to, to discuss that. Mm -hmm. But I also think it was this particular thing on the salary was an unusual occurrence because when we started, we had no idea what the the director of the EMS should be paid. We we didn't know. I, wouldn't you say that's true, Bobby? I mean, Gary. I mean, we didn't know. We we were flying by. I think one we actually we, budgeted more than we had paid him. Right. So I, I I I think once once we once we have established the process, I think that process will work smoother. And we and and we still shouldn't be afraid to talk to the finance committees. But I think once we've been there for a while, I think it'll be a little bit easier mm -hmm. to, to deal with. So I kind of agree. I, I, I guess I'm agreeing with you. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Everything's miracle never cease. But, but, but I think it's important. I, I, I don't I think any town should, and I think that's the beauty of the process is that no town should give up their say at the table. Right. That we're all, that we're all equal. That, that we should, you know, we, have, we, we all have a seat at the table and we shouldn't be afraid to have that, you know, have that conversation. I know it's troublesome for Zach because, be, because Zach is the only one being quote unquote heard on this, but I think it will work well, itself out. Well, I mean, part of the issue was um, we did for capital improvement because I happen to be on that committee and the cots that were originally um, put in were put in for $10,000 each. So the Capital Improvement Committee voted twenty thousand dollars, but then Zach came back with what the real price was, which was twenty-five thousand each, and so the Capital Improvement Committee only approved one. Well, then our Finance Committee approved two, and then the Board of Selectmen approved two in the budget, but our Capital Improvement Committee had only voted one. So there was, you know, there was some, you know, that was a problem, and and so there was. I mean, we need to work out. Some of these things. And, yeah, and, and I would, and I would, I would say, and if I would continue, if I could, Mr. Chair, what I would say is that just like we have the opportunity to go to regional school committee meetings um, during the year, when we talk our budget, we should have, may, maybe we should send out invitations to the capital and the personnel so that they're part of the conference, where they can at least participate in the conversation with us, and so that we are waiting for the end. On that same thought, though, but when. The teachers have their union negotiating. Each board of selectmen has a chance to mm -hmm. be on that mm -hmm. team, don't they? Well, they have the one the, the selectmen by the selectmen by law have in a union in a in a region they have the right for one rep, one representative um, for Frontier on the the union thirty eight. We each we each have one member on on the negotiating team. A little different between Frontier and Union 30. Okay. Anything further on that? Well, Can along I, those well, lines, I didn't know where, when you wanted to talk about fiscal stuff. Do you want to do it since we're sort of talking about money? Well, let's just talk about this oh. subject. I think Tim's oh. got something he wants to add. Yeah, I, I think oh. that for me, 
I think that it is important that we discuss in this group the role that this group plays in relation to the role that Deerfield Selectmen play. And I, I don't want it to seem like if this board have, makes a recommendation and for whatever reason Deerfield can't do that, that it's, I, I want it ironed out or I'd like it ironed out. If this board by a majority votes on something, do the Deerfield Selectmen have to do it that way or do we have separate input? Not that I'm saying I want separate input, I just want it clear as to how it goes. That way, if this board says it's going to be green, then we say, well, we don't agree, but so what? It's going to be green, you know? And that's the, the, the grayness about it that troubles me. I think if we could have the three administrators look at some kind of language to put together and send it back to us for another meeting, Okay. Work on that this summer. That sounds, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah, it, it would be really nice to do it this summer, just because you don't have the budget stressing us out. Yeah, it's right. not exactly. It's not actually. It won't be far away. But. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, it's, hopefully it's you know it just it's not hanging over our heads. Yeah. And, 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 and for me, it, it's real clear because I I don't want to feel like I'm ever put in a position whether it's disagreeing with this board and then having residents of my community say, well, it doesn't say that, so you don't have to do that. And then, you know, now all of a sudden I'm put between the rock and hard spot. Yeah, I'd yeah. rather have the clear language, and, you know, however it is, so then I can say, it doesn't matter. This, is, this is the way we do it. That makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, yeah. Right. Then you don't have to right. second guess. Right. Yep. Okay. That sounds like a good plan, Bob. Carolyn, what else did you oh, want to well, uh, um, talk just, about budget? Yes, well, I just kind of, I mean, what we should probably do is just have a little line item on the agenda every month, just saying, you know, like a fiscal update. Mm -hmm. But, um, we're, you know, we're getting towards the end of the year. Um, you know, we have one more pay period. Um, although the reconciliation has only been done through um, April, so um, we have um, about a balance of 80,000, well, 81,000 in the account from receivables, which seems very low, but that's only because that's just through May. And um, so we usually get, you know, between 40 and 60 a quarter coming in. So I would, you know, I would think that we're going to be around 150-ish, 120, 150-ish by the end of the year. So that, that you know, is on track. We're a little, as Zach has reported, we're a little down on our runs um, where we are from last year. But um, I think a lot of that has to I think he made up for that this week. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, Sunderland, Sunderland's assessment might have to go up. There's one address <laughs> we keep going to. Uh, <laughs> well, the um, heat. <laughs> yeah, it's something. Tuesday. Yeah, well, I, I was just going to say, I think it had to do with the damp. The weather because people were staying inside but as soon as that 90 degree weather started popping up you know people are outside they're in the river they're out in their yards they're falling off ladders they're doing all kinds of stuff so um i i think we're going to be okay i mean we're not that far off even though our runs are, are a little bit low at this point i mean not calculated I, april we did 73 runs the, in may we did 93 runs so I mean yes, I mean we've seen a now that the weather's nicer, we're through the winter, yes, absolutely yeah. we're seeing that. I, I think it's weather related. So that's it's just I didn't want people to feel like we weren't the money wasn't coming in. It's just it hasn't been calculated. Okay. Right? Did the assessments to Waitley and Sunderland get out um, early this year or um, late? Or uh, let's see. It looks like yes, the revenue is in here from mm -hmm. both came in. So we're we're current. Okay. Yep. And um, there was a couple there was a couple of refunds. I don't know what that was for, but anyway, um, it was just that's a little money anyway. It's like eight hundred bucks. But um, what what I was concerned about a few months ago was not you know that we're going to overspend our um, salary line and we're going to make it. We we have truly overspent our full time salary line. Um, you know, for the first time, but that's because for the first time we actually are fully staffed. So, um, you know, we're, we're still, because we had so much overtime initially, we, you know, had overspent that. But if you add in the call um, numbers, you know, the call amount that we 
have it allocated for on call, then we'll make it through the end of the month. Um, yeah, like, it, that, that, you know, when that, all, those on call numbers factor in vacation, sick time, things like that. So the idea being if somebody calls out sick last minute, a call member takes that, and that's where the money comes out of. So when we encumber overtime because we don't have a call member to take that, you know, that's where it's robbing Peter to pay Paul on those line items. The, the bottom line of our salary numbers, as Carolyn said, we, sh we should be under what we budgeted for. We just happen to be paying for it um, through a different means. We have about 45000 left in our on-call line, and we have 13000 left in our full-time staff, and our payroll is generally around 20 ish So. We are actually going to make it, so it's not. Yeah, overtime. Yeah, well, the yeah. overtime has creeped up again. This pay period is, you know, quite a bit higher. And uh, yeah, sickness, yeah, sickness. Sickness. yeah, sickness. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that normal ebb and flow of. Okay. Yeah. Um. So one of the things that I was thinking of is, you know, obviously we still have to do outreach for our call staff so that we will spend more money on call staff and less time on overtime. So we still need to work on that and. You know, once we get into the new building, I think that will have a huge impact on our salary line, um, just because everybody's together. And but I really want to pursue, um, you know, because we are paying overtime to do some clerical stuff. And I really think um, our receivables are really creeping up again. And um, Comcast, I mean, Comstar sent out a bill three or four times. I'm not really sure if it's three or four, but something like that. And then they stop. So um, when you talk to like um, departments like Northampton, they actually have people call and chase down the money. You know, say, well, what can we do? We can work out a payment plan or whatever. So if we could hire a clerical person, even if we paid like 20 bucks an hour, that's so much better than paying an overtime, you know, paramedic or you know other persons um, to do it. And then. Um, they, they probably would pay for themselves if they just were able mm -hmm. to do consistent follow-up on their receivables. Um, I, I yeah. know we're working on the, they could be the write-off policy. A liaison to the Comstar. Right. You know, why is this one right. being rejected? Yeah, I mean, it could only, sure. it's, it's only a lot of times it's just because like the social security number doesn't match up or it's a missed right. number on the, on the Wrong insurance number card. On the insurance card. Right. Yeah. So if the clerical person if we hire this part-time clerical person, then we're not paying insurance, the cost of insurance. But Zach would have somebody to chase down some of the stuff that he doesn't have to do anymore, and then we don't have to pay paramedics to do. And then um, they could chase down the receivables, and, and, and which again could be just as number a number off on a card. Which and, brings and, up another thought that we need a rug off policy. Well, we're working on that. Wendy and Zach are working on that. I met with Wendy and um, Brenda, the town accountant, um, to discuss the write-off policy. What uh, Brenda tackled it from her, and I provided her the information I had gathered from the other ambulance services, and she drew up a policy. Um, I'm working with Comstar to figure out, basically design a flow chart about, you know, what scenario, it, you know, patient pays bill, it ends here, patient doesn't pay bill, what do we do? Yeah. And try to streamline that whole process, because my concern was I wanted to make that as objective as possible. Um, so working with them, figuring out what the flow is, and then applying the policy, agreeing on a policy. And so that way, at least tracking those things down will be easier for anybody to do um, because it will be an objective method and we'll know exactly what the options are. Um, we won't yeah. be chasing and, ourselves. And, and again, you know, we'll be able to have a clerical person. They can come in, they can take direction, and that will free up Zach to be more on the ambulance and, um, you know, uh, be do more outreach and do more community stuff. And, um, and that will also free up our paramedics, you know, so they don't have to do overtime to do some clerical stuff. I mean, we're just paying a huge amount of money to have somebody, like, run to the register the ambulance. I mean, that should have been, you know, a, a clerical person could have done that. I, yeah, yeah I, the, but, you know, I, if there's a specific instance, I mean, I, I know when we do those things, we try to move schedules and, and not encumber any sort of overtime for those things. So I just use um, that as an example. Okay. I mean, you've got regular stuff that you've got to do, and, and it just makes sense if a clerical. If you don't need a skilled person, why would we pay a skilled person? And that's part of 
maturing our organization here is to move it ahead and become more, um, yeah, more like a business and more um, accountable to you know using our money um, better. And that, and ultimately, that costs us as a community less um, in the end, which makes everybody happy. So. Um, it, you know, those are only my suggestions, and it, we're going to be okay. I had raised the flag that, you know, I was really worried that we might um, run out of money on our salary line, and Zach stepped in as best he could between, you know, um, personnel being sick and having issues, and, and so that uh, got under control, and we just, you know, we just have to keep on top of this stuff. But the, if I looked at one recommendation for us going forward, it would really be, you know, let's, we, we need to do more outreach to the, try to get call staff in because that's how the police department is, you know, fit backfill rather than paying full, you know, overtime. And, um, and then, you know, have the clerical person come in and that frees up our skilled staff to do more other things um, at well, a cheaper rate. So that's a great outreach to, you know, to Yankee. I mean, that's a great idea. That's and that's a wonderful thing. There. Yeah. I mean, that's, to me, that's what you should be doing, and, and, and enhancing stuff in our communities versus, you know, doing the paperwork. Somebody else can do some of this stuff. And you don't need to be on the phone, you know, trying to figure out how this person is going to pay us for a run or whatever, or get the correct insurance paper. That should be done by somebody that we're paying 20 bucks an hour to or something. I mean, that just makes sense to me. Um, so, whatever. That was, I just well, wanted to bring that up. And I, I see your point, Carolyn, but I, I guess I'm a bit confused is that, you know, we don't pay our EMTs a whole lot more than $20 an hour. And as long as they could do it during the day while they're there, I don't necessarily see. Oh, I'm not saying a clerical person is not helpful, but, you know, I don't, I've always heard, and I, I could be mistaken, if we do three runs a day, I don't know how long it takes, but if somebody's there for eight hours, there's a good chance that they have an hour in between where they could, you know, start on this or even make the call to Billy Joe Smith and look for the money and, you know, and if the, the alarm goes off, say, I'll call you back later and you go off in the ambulance. Huh? Kip, I'm not disagreeing and that will be the huge advantage of being in one building under yeah. one roof. Yeah. Um, people can be actually assigned to these collateral duties right. and, um, and, and then you would not use your clerical person that many hours. Yeah. I mean, the idea is to <coughs> not pay overtime for the stuff that you know could be done regular time or by a clerical person. That was my only observation of you know since I've been on the board trying to sort out what's going on and tracking money and just those are the things that we could tighten up and it would have a huge impact on, on our bottom line here. Um, but we're okay and that was really what I wanted our message to be tonight is we're going to make it through the end of the fiscal year. We're going to be okay under budget, and there are not really any other problems. And um, you know, we'll just those are the areas that I wanted to watch going forward and see if we could do something to correct and improve and mitigate those kind of expenses. That I felt, you know, as a more mature organization, that we should be able to handle. I mean, that's part of you know we're, we're getting more you know we're. Zach is, is doing better budgeting, he's doing better stuff, and, and we should be able to stay on top of that. But I wanted to point out there is improvement, but I see some more improvement coming down the line that will have, have bottom line impact for us as communities where we're going to end up spending less, which is kind of exciting because mostly, you know, when you do the budgeting, it's oh, how are we going to pay the bills? <laughs> So this is, I'm excited. We're doing, I think we're doing great. You know, we're moving forward positively versus, oh no, how are we going to keep affording this? How, how, how are we going to keep the level of service and pay the bills? We are looking towards enhancing service, enhancing outreach, and reducing our bills. And that's kind of, I mean, this is great. Yeah. This is a positive thing. So we just need to keep moving more um, along those lines. Anything else new on that subject? We can move on to the next agenda item. What else did you have on there? Is there another agenda item? Mm -hmm. Is that it? Oof. 
Um, yeah, I don't think so either. I think that's that, that is. Um, well, that was quite a hands over in a short period of time. Anything else to come before the board? Just like to wish Sean Conway happy 250th birthday. Yes. Yes. That's I'm yeah. yeah. glad we're facilitating. Yeah. Um, we're happy them to do having it. a good time. So thank you. Thank yeah. you, Zach. Absolutely. Uh, and then I'd also on the patch stack. I mean, the patch is nice, but I I think you're right up with what the patch is supposed to signify was more important. So I would hope that in the, when he explained when we get it right where, before you came in. Huh? He explained it right before you came in. But but when we go into our new facility, whenever that may happen, yeah. that that you have a larger version of this, and those words are written so that we don't forget why. Um, this means so what it does. Mm. So I, I think your your writing was more more impressive than the patch itself. So sure. thank you. Thank you. I could also use a jacket to go with the patch. You know, uh, you, hey, we have the right to the embroidery. Um, <laughs> you can download a high quality image of that on our Facebook page. Nice. Um, it's our it's our avatar image there. So awesome. if you want to blaze in everything you own, then Unbelled. please print it out. And <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. Motion, motion. to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.